So we all know that in this day and age, iPhones are actually really capable cameras. They shoot in 4K up to 60 frames per second. They have great image stabilization on the lens and internally on the sensor. They have HDR capabilities in case you're out in the sun like I am right now. And they're incredibly convenient because we carry them on us all the time. But something that these small sensors do suffer on is noise and grain in the image, especially if you decide to shoot something in low light conditions. But I wanted to test how bad is the noise and grain at different ISO levels. Because as we all know, the main camera is easily the best camera with the least amount of noise and grain. But let's see how the telephoto and the ultra wide lens pair up in comparison. So this is gonna be a simple test. I'm gonna shoot at a bunch of different ISOs, the lowest as possible, 100, 200, 800, and 1600 to see how the grain compares from each of these cameras. So let's get to shooting. All right, and that's it for all the tests. Let's go back onto the computer and compare all these images side by side. All right, so now I'm back in my office. I uploaded all the footage onto the computer. So now let's take a close look and compare each shot and see which one is the noisiest. So let's start with the native camera. So as we look here, I'm noticing this is actually a very clean image. Everything looks pretty sharp. Even in the shadows, it's not particularly overly noisy. It definitely gets crushed towards the very bottom left here where it's the darkest. But otherwise, the image looks very sharp and clean. I'm really happy with the ISO at 34. Now let's move on to ISO 100. And so far, there's very minimal difference. I don't really see. The only difference I notice is that some of the crushed blacks are now brought up obviously a little bit, even though I did try to compensate the exposure by ch changing the shutter speed. But uh, it seems that it seems to retain more of the shadows. But I would say the noise level is pretty comparable to 34. So nothing strikingly different here. At 200, once again, not very noticeable, but as if I zoom in here, it's definitely a little bit grainier than 100, especially as we head towards the shadows. The highlights look just about the same. Um, nothing to really scoff at here. So I would say so far 34, 100, 200 look fantastic on the native camera. Now we're in 400 and now I'm starting to see a little bit more noise and a little bit of aberrations, especially if you look at the trees, they're not as tack sharp in the background. The image is st starting to fall apart even as low as 400, but nothing terrible. I would say it still is very usable footage. ISO 800, now this, <laughs> now the image is starting to look a little bit painterly, like you're starting to lose texture in the leaves all the way in the distance, even on the grass within the foreground, it's starting to lose its texture. It's not as sh uh, sharp as of edges. There's a considerable amount of noise, especially in the shadows now, as soon as you start getting anywhere towards uh, darker areas, there's just a ton of noise. And the highlights seem to be okay. Uh, not as noisy, but still a little polluted. 1600, I would say the image kind of starts to fall apart. Uh, it just doesn't look very good. It's obviously extremely noisy. You're losing so much texture and detail on the foreground and the background elements. Surprisingly, the middle ground uh, still retains a decent amount of detail, but even at 1600, it's starting to lose a lot of its quality. So that's the limits of the main camera. Let's move on to the ultra wide. First test is actually at 24 ISO and the image looks okay. Um, I do notice that even at this ISO, which is the lowest by the way, as you enter any shadowy areas, there's a decent amount of noise and grain, especially here if you look towards the grass or even at the tree on the right. But otherwise, um, all the well-lit areas look quite nice and sharp, have a lot of detail, no noise issues. Now let's see ISO 100. Even at 100, this image is falling apart. Uh, you can see that the trees in the background have suddenly become painterly again. And there's just a ton of noise and grain already so you can already tell that the ultra wide camera is very sensitive uh, to low light. You really need a lot of light for this camera to work properly. But even at 100 ISO, it's just, it's falling apart. 200, surprisingly not that much more different, except for the grain seems to have jumped quite a bit. That's to be expected, especially with such a small sensor as this on the ultra wide setting. Now let's move on to 400. Yeah, I wouldn't use this camera at 400 ISO at all. It just looks so ridiculously noisy and grainy. 
it could be used to effect, but as you can see, there's just such a great loss of detail. And by the way, these are all filmed in 4K. So you're going to start to notice the grain a lot more in this setting. I only imagine 1080p would be a little worse. 800, completely unusable, I would say. It just looks so soft and distorted. You can't even quite make out the leaves or the grass in the foreground. And then 1600, yeah, like you can even start to see on the top left of the frame. There's a lot of chromatic aberration already happening. There's like these green and purple tinges that might even be from the noise. Um, yeah, it's all around the edges of the frame. It seems to be more pronounced, that sort of aberration. And the image is just completely falling apart at this point. Now let's move on to our final test, which is the telephoto lens. Now the first one is actually shot at 21 ISO. And I gotta say the telephoto lens looks amazing at this ISO. It's actually kind of astonishing. I didn't realize how good the telephoto lens was especially when you have proper lighting conditions like this. So I would definitely use this at 21. 100, surprisingly, I did notice it get a little bit softer. So I think I do prefer the uh, 21 ISO over the 100 so far, but nothing to scoff at, still looks fantastic. The highlights are retained, the shadows look good. There's not that much noise. If at all, you really have to be pixel peeping. I, I can show you in this darker area where the trees are. There's a little bit of noise, but nothing, nothing to scoff at. ISO 200, the highlights and all the detail is surprisingly still there. However, the shadowy areas are starting to lose their sharpness and they're starting to get a little more grainy and noisy. At 400, now the grain and noise is definitely noticeable and has, has now bled into the highlighted areas. Surprisingly, once again, still relatively speaking sharp. As we head towards the background, we can see that it loses that sharpness, but in the foreground and in the middle ground, it's relatively sharp. So even at this ISO, it's doing a good job. 800, now we've head into that painterly territory where things are starting to lose their detail. It's noisy once again, and the noise has now sp spilled over into the whole image. Finally, 1600, this is where it's <laughs> really fallen apart. You can tell that the image is completely distorted. There's a loss of detail across the whole image. Highlights are being blown out, shadows are not retaining any detail in them except for noise and grain, and I would definitely not use this lens at 1600 ISO. What I've pretty much gathered is that although some people have said in the past that the native ISO for many cameras is 100, um, this may be true for other brands, but when we're talking about iPhones, it seems like the lower the ISO, the better image quality. Even at 100, it's not noticeable compared to 34 or 21, especially on the main camera. But when you're talking about the ultra wide or the telephoto, there's actually a considerable difference and a bump in quality when you drop the ISO below 100. So definitely something that I kind of suspected naturally, but I was never sure because I, like I said, I read online that typically most cameras native ISO is 100 and going below that can sometimes cause issues. But with the iPhone, it doesn't seem to be true. So there you go. I hope uh, this video was helpful. Maybe you learned something. Uh, please leave a like if you liked the video. Uh, follow for more filmmaking content. I'll be doing more camera tests and camera gear reviews. Um, I really want to actually just start limit testing more things out of my own curiosity and I figure you guys might like that as well. So anyways, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.